Okay, the first activity that you could do is something called calculator counting, okay? And what's great about using um, the calculator counting activity is that it truly is true differentiation. So it doesn't matter if you have students who um, are working on counting by ones up to 20 or 50 or 100 or past, and I'll show you how it works. So what you do is get a, re a regular standard calculator. You go ahead and hit the plus sign tw twice. One, and then when you hit equals, and so the, your calculator now becomes a counting machine. So say you have students who are just working on counting to 20, you could go ahead and have them do, you know, plus plus one up to 20. Say it's a student who's struggling to do that transition from the 90s into the 100s, so you could go ahead and do 90 plus plus one equals 91, 92, 93, and then you can differentiate it between where your students are. This is a great activity you can do like as a warm up the first three or four minutes in class. Um, and it works really, really well for all students. So also not only is it, is it gonna be a forward counting machine, but say you have students who are struggling counting backwards, you could say, okay, start at 56 minus minus one equals, and now it is a backward counting machine as well. And also, if you have students who are working on, say, counting by tens, you could go ahead and say, okay, 5 plus plus 10 equals 15, 25, 35, 45, 55, 65, 75. So those are all the, all the, there's many different ways, all the things that you can do with the calculator counting. It can differentiate from counting by ones, forward, backward, counting by tens, forward, counting by tens, backward. So even if you're a, you know, a general ed teacher and you have many, many kids in your room, figuring out what each of your students needs, you could go ahead and say, okay, students, you know, if you're working on, on ones, counting by ones, plus, plus one, start here. If you're working on backwards, put on the board 50 minus, minus one, and that's something that they can do too, okay? So that's called calculator counting. And then the next activity you can do to help your kids with counting, it's just this This comes with your materials, but you could use any number line. Um, you could use the number line that's in your classrooms as well. And a lot of times the number line just becomes a decorative piece. You know, we can, it's up there, but we don't use it that often. So this is a way to really utilize what you have to. So you could go ahead and just have students go ahead and take a number line and just 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Or if you're teaching them count backwards, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, and so on. So the number line that you have goes all the way up to 110. This one's obviously, I just didn't put the whole thing together, but that's what that one looks like, okay. Now the next thing that you could do is you could, um, you could go ahead and put out some cards and you can have students go ahead and sequence those cards, okay? So you could say, all right, I want you to go ahead and sequence these from the least to the greatest or greatest to least, however you wanna do it. Or you also could have um, a set of numbers. It could be like 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Mix them up, say I want you to go ahead and put these in order for me as well. So sequencing is a really good tool and there's some really good online activities that I'll show you in a little bit that have to do with sequencing as well. All right, going back to the number line now, um, another activity you can do with the number line is you can um, go ahead and screen or cover up numbers and then ask your students questions about them and say, okay, what number is this? And we're all looking at it and we say, we know it's 13. This is where you can develop some very important language. So we know it's 13. Well, how can we prove that it's 13? Well, I know that 13 comes after 12 and it comes before 14. We're looking at 17 right here. How do I know that's 17? Well, because I know that 16 comes before 17 and seven, or, I'm sorry, I know that 17 comes after 16. I know that 17 comes before 18, so developing that language. Another activity that you can do, and this is this is um, what a lot of people like to do because counting by tens is so hard for kids, especially when kids are learning to count by tens, um, leaving those single digit numbers, jumping into the teens. It's like a language thing, like, you know, 6, 16, 26. A lot of kids struggle with that. So what this is, this is called a 10 catcher. And what you can do is you it, it shows kids, it jumps 10 for them. So if you're at eight and we jump 10, it goes to 18. Or if we are at, say, 17 and we jump 10, it would go to 27. So this is called a 10 catcher. And again, this is with your number lines that you receive for your, um, that's in your materials.
another activity that has to do with number lines is this. And this, again, this comes in your materials. And this is a blank number line. I'm going to show you how it works, okay? So this just has the decade numbers on it. And who thinks they know what number this would be on? So take a look at where that's at. And what number would this be on? And say, mm, all right, let's take a look. And I think it's 60 or maybe 70. And let's take a look. And it is on 70. And this is a really good tool, too, because what it does, if you, take, if you think about what this is, it helps them with visualization, sort of that spatial relationship. Think about what fractions is. Fractions is parts of you know, with what falls between zero and one, this is obviously zero and a hundred, but it teaches them sort of that estimation and understanding what parts, where parts will fall when you can't see them because that's what fractions is. Let's do another one. Okay, what number would this be? And let's take a look and you're all probably thinking, I think that's probably 40 and let's take a look and that is definitely 40. And that's definitely a first grade, um, like a first grade one for sure. Um, now this one would be one that you could use with second graders because in almost every state, second grade was where you either cross a thousand a little bit or go exactly up to a thousand. So this is what the thousand one looks like. The first time you use this, many kids are gonna say, oh, I know that one, that's 40. Why will they think that's 40? Because that's where 40 fell when it was 100, but now it's a thousand. So you'd say, okay, let's take a look. This is actually 400 because think instead of 100 missing numbers, there's now 1,000. Say 40 would actually be somewhere like somewhere right about somewhere probably about half is 50 right there. I'd say 40 would be somewhere probably right about right there. So you could go ahead and um, show your students that way too. So that's another, another really good tool that you can use. And again, if you think about this, if you kind of think of connecting it to fractions, like numerators and denominators, the larger the denominator, the more pieces you have. And think about this, though this is not a denominator, the larger number you have, the smaller the pieces get on the same thing. So if we take a look comparing it, you know, the pieces were much bigger on this one when we were doing 100 compared to 1,000. Two more activities I want to show you. And this is just a plastic hundred grid. This can almost be something that you had set up at like a center or something for students to do. And what it is, it's cut up, but you want them to go ahead and put the number line together. So it's almost like a puzzle where you say, I right, put the number line together. And this is the activity that will take them a couple minutes to do it. If you're one to one and you have technology, you can say, all right, when you're done, I want you to take a picture of it, or I want you to show me or post it online or, or just have them, um, have them just do it and put it together. And when you're done, you can go ahead and check on them. And that's another activity that you can do using the number line. Now this next one is called a hundred grid puzzle. And so what's great about this one is instead of a number line, it teaches them a little bit differently. So if this is the main piece right here and we're like, all right, this is 69 and that's 58. Well, if we're counting by tens, right? And we have to go, this is where it gets tricky. If we have to go back, because remember, they're going up. Kids usually think when you go up, it means you're going to be, you're going to have more, right? But actually, you're, when you go up on a number grid, you're actually going less. When you go down, you're, you're getting more. So this can be confusing. So make sure your kids are really familiar with number lines first before you get into the, the hundred grid. A lot of people don't use number lines, they just use number grids. And we'll talk about that in a couple more minutes about why that's so difficult. But for this one, we could say, all right, well, I have 27 here and I'm lining up there. So 27, so now I'm probably gonna look for, there we go, there's my 30s, 37 there. So I may look for 47 or, or go through it. And let's take a look what I can find. I have another piece for 18, 18 to go here, and then my 80s would be there. I got my single digits would go right here, and I don't want to do the whole thing, but I think you guys get the point. So it's just like a puzzle where they have to use their knowledge of, you know, counting by tens or counting by ones or going forward or back. So now we're going to work on some activities you can do to help your kids with um, addition and subtraction or, or learning how to do that basic counting on. 
because we know a lot of kids when they start working with addition and subtraction, they want to count everything that's in there. So this first this first activity is called cup counting, or you can use a bucket too, but you just need a um, cup that you cannot see through, and I'll show you how it works. Okay. So we all agree, and we take a look. There's zero in the cup. Ready? How many are in the cup? And we know that I just put in three, and we could hear click, click, click. All right, ready? There's how many are in the cup? Three. Now how many are in the cup? And there's five. And think about it. What is helping us keep track of the counts? It's every time we put one in, we hear a click, click, click. So now there's five in the cup. And what are we teaching them to do right now? We may not even realize it, but what we're doing, we're teaching them how to count on, right? We had three in the cup. We put two more, they had to go three, four, five, and then we had five, we put two more, and they went five, six, seven. So we teach them how to count on. Okay, here's another um, another thing to remember is when you, whatever goes in the cup can also come out of the cup. You should be working on it equally. So if there's seven in the cup, now I'm in the cup. Now I'm in the cup. So again, what goes in the cup also can come out of the cup. Here's another activity, activity that you can do too. You can go ahead and say, okay, um, there's my cup right there. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a nine card in there. So we know that we're starting off with nine. And then I can go nine, count by ones. If you have a student who needs to count by ones, you can always do that by counting by ones. We have 11. Now I can put two more in and I can make it 12. So um, you always can mix also numbers with numbers and um, counters or what goes in the cup comes out of the cup. All right, another activity that you can do is you can do just something like this. Okay. We know that there's four right there, right? So if there's four, and now I have two more right there, how many do I have all together? We know there's four here, and there's two there. And how many are there all together? It would be four, five, six. Again, remember, we're doing all of this to help them um, learn their counting on. Or you could do something like this if you wanted. Um, be like, okay, I have nine right there. If I have nine and I have five more, so ready? Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Again, this is teaching kids. The whole goal of this, of this introduction of addition things is so kids can learn the count, right? You know, some kids, you know, may not be ready for this and they want to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's very developmental. So you want to start off where they can see everything. And then as it gets more complex or more difficult, you can go ahead and make, make the slow changes that are need to, that you would need to make for that. Also, remember when it comes to cup counting, it doesn't always have to be as basic as it just was where we're putting one or two at a time, put in, put them back. You can do something like this. Okay, ready? I have 44, I'm putting 44 in the cup. So I had 44, 10 more would be 54, 64, 65, 66. So remember, you can put in 10 rods, you can put in units. Um, if you have a larger bucket, you could go ahead and put in 100 flats too. So remember, everything that goes in the bucket also can come out of the bucket or in the cup out of the cup. And this is just a good activity. You can do this with your students. For students who are working on, you know, one more, one less, two more, two less, that's fine for students who are at a higher level. You can always start putting in 10 rods or multiple 10 rods at the same time too. So this really just, um, it goes through and it really expands everything too. So you can do it with the cup. You can do it with counters and screening it. Um, when you get really good at it, you can do things like this where you would say, all right, I have three counters here. I have three counters here, and I have some more counters. Sorry, I have some more counters under here, okay? So I have three counters here, I have some more counters under here. All together, there's five. So I have three here, there's some more under here. How many, and all together there's five. How many under here? There would be two. So again, you can get to a point where you're screening both 
And then this is really high level stuff. This isn't something that you'd be doing with someone who's just learning to go one more or one less, but this is where you can take it um, with your instructions. So um, where you can see them, where you can not see them, putting in, putting out, and then putting in multiples of tens too. So there's a lot you can do with this.